you are part of a historic commemorative ceremony. And you could only honor today the ceremony in the mar martyrs of Kashmir if you pay full attention and you listen to all the honorable speakers. This commemorative ceremony is historic for a reason. The first time we have two of our main guests, His Excellency Sayyid Abdul Shah Abdul Qureshi and His Excellency Sardar Masood Khan, who is President of Azad Jammu and Kashmir. They both flew thousands of miles away to represent Pakistan and the feelings what Pakistan is feeling on this particular day. While you entered in this particular hall, you passed through the exhibition. So there's a trail of tears, the agony, the torture, the bloodshed, and all of that you witnessed that's being that's happening right now in the Indian occupied Kashmir. Tonight's event is co-hosted by MP Ibrahim Hussain, who is representing Little Pakistan from Bradford, who is also Shadow Justice Minister. So I'll be inviting MP Imran Hussain, our co-host, to open the event of history.
we stand against the persecution, the oppression, and the injustice that they continue to face. And we, in the British Parliament, have made some significant progress over the last few years. I'm also joined here today by my colleague, Debbie Abrahams, who is the chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group, and she will shortly speak for one minute or one or two minutes to update on the work of the All Party Parliamentary Group. But let me be clear, and let this message be sent on this the arrival of the Foreign Minister, the President, other major dignities of Pakistan. We want, we want a peaceful resolution. We want all the parties to be sat around the table so that we can find a peaceful resolution to this age-old issue. And we want to make sure that that language of peace, and in that regard, I want to thank the Foreign Minister, the Government of Pakistan, for the language of friendship, the initiatives of peace that we have seen over the last few weeks. Because I think that is a massive change in terms of the direction. And that, but the burning issue remains. Because the first thing we need is we need the human rights violations, the atrocities, the persecution, oppression, injustice, blaming, blame. We need that to stop in the first instance. And that is what the Solidarity Day is to ask the international community to ask for this injustice, grave injustice against humanity to be stopped immediately. The second issue is the one around self-determination. And this issue is one that will require more work and the ultimate decision is for the sons and daughters of Kashmir to make that decision. I again thank all the dignitaries uh, that have come here today. Uh, if uh, Minister Sultan Mahmoud Saab is in the audience, he's also expected here today, but I don't know if he is, and he is welcome also. Again, and I ask everybody, we only have a few speeches today, please, uh, we ask for your patience, but thank you for everybody who has come today. Thank you very much.
commemorating Saturday. I'm requesting all of you to observe 60 seconds of silence to pay tribute to all those who lost their lives in the struggle for freedom. So, 60 seconds of silence. I would request my honorable guests to stand up and 60 seconds of full silence to honor the martyrs of Indian Army by Kashmir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, all of you, for honoring the martyrs of Indian occupied Kashmir. Now, moving forward with our ceremony and commemoration, we have representatives from all three major parties, from the British House of Commons, House of Lords. We have uh, Lord Kuban Hussain with us, who will be speaking only briefly for a minute to represent the British House of Lords. Your Excellency, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Your Excellency, the High Commissioner of Pakistan, Senators, Members of Parliament, Members of the House of Lords, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon to you all. I've been asked to speak for a minute or two to show my solidarity with the Kashmiri people. I, as a member of the British House of Lords, can tell you the all party parliamentary group on Kashmir is very concerned about the human rights situation in Indian health Kashmir. We know the United Nations Human Rights Commission has produced a report and many other organizations such as OIC, Amnesty International and other organizations have also re reported grave human rights violations in Indian and Kashmir. We are concerned that the Indian Army is engaged in illegal detentions, killings, rapes, and all sorts of atrocities including torture in that part of the world. We condemn those atrocities and we stand united against these brutalities with the Kashmiri people and we will continue to support them until they get their right of self-determination. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Today's commemoration ceremony is historic for a reason. It's being hosted and organized by the British Pakistani diaspora from the United Kingdom and all across the UK and the EU. We have a very special guest who flew thousands of miles to be here. He has been a former senior minister in the AJK government. We'll be requesting uh, Yassin, leader of opposition, Chaudhry Mohammed Yassin, to speak briefly to the audience.
Kashmir. As this day, 5th of February, was being observed by the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Mahmoud Bayazid, who was Shaheed when she was Prime Minister, uh, officially. And since then, this day has been observed not only in all cities of Azad Kashmir, Pakistan, but all over the world, wherever Pakistan is living. So I really, I don't have the words to thank the uh,
the people of Kashmir. The people of Kashmir are struggling for the last 71 years. But since 8 July 2016, there is a spontaneous, democratic, and indigenous movement in occupied Kashmir. Whereas Indians are using the rape as war of weapon, they are using pellet guns to blind the youth and the children in occupied Kashmir. But we are here to salute the people that still they are struggling against 700,000 drugs. So this is a high time that yesterday. Kashmir has to be determined according to the free will and the power and the aspirations of the people of Kashmir. And I think now the time has come that international focus is on Kashmir. The United Nations Commission for Human Rights has passed the report in last June and on 30th of October, the British Parliament has also and Kashmiris wherever they are in the world to support the right of self-determination of the people of Kashmir, condemn Indian atrocities in occupied Kashmir and focus the international community, focus the international community on Kashmir issue. And I very much hope the to pay tribute to the martyr, the martyrs of Kashmir. So bring it on the back, please. Silence, please. Silence. Silence, silence. Silence, please. Silence. thanks. Now, to proceed with the program, The Foreign Minister wants it. The Foreign Minister. His Excellency. Ask the Foreign the Minister, Minister to come. Of, uh, we want the Foreign Minister to speak. The that we share with. Foreign Minister. Thank you. 
majority of them. They're just a fraction of the number of people, of the number of victims, of the brutalities of Indian occupation forces of India to Kashmir. Yes. 
Excellency Sardar Masood Khan, President of Azad Jammu Kashmir. Cruel and brutal 
Armed Forces of India. So thank you, London. I want to say thank you, the House of Commons and the House of Lords, because India has imposed a gag order in the Indian occupied Kashmir. They won't let Kashmiris speak up. They have snatched from them their right to speak, to express their opinion. There is no freedom of expression in Kashmir. But they wanted to impose the same restriction on the British Parliament. And they wanted to impose a gag order on the House of Commons and the House of Lords and said that the <coughs> Kashmir event, which was organized by all party parliamentary group on Pakistan on the premises of the United Kingdom Parliament, should not be held. And the Parliament here said, no, under no circumstances we will stop this event if you have this event. I also want to thank the diaspora community, the redoubtable diaspora community of the United Kingdom who have been striving for the right to self-determination of the people of Jammu and Kashmir and asking for the, an end to egregious human rights violations there year after year and decade after decade. And let me tell you that your efforts, your concerted efforts are bearing fruit. Congratulations and thank you so much on behalf of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. <clears throat> Let me also tell you that the United Kingdom today is preoccupied with Brexit and still as a state, as a parliament and as common citizens you decide to give time to Kashmir. There was this unprecedented International Kashmir Conference held yesterday in the House of Commons. There were demonstrations today, robust demonstrations today. There is an exhibition today here and this event which is being hosted by Honorable Imran Hussain. <coughs> Let me also tell you that the 5th of February today is an International Kashmir Solidarity Day. Because though we mark the Kashmir solidarity today, here in London, there were demonstrations in Rome and Brescia and Berlin and Paris and Brussels and London and New York and Toronto and Ottawa, the Gulf, the Middle East and the Asia Pacific region. So it is truly an International Kashmir Solidarity Day. Let me contrast it, let me contrast it with a visit of Narendra Modi two days ago to Kashmir. And he went to empty streets and he was roaming around and waving to empty spaces in a boat there. Of course, Kashmiris say, go India, go back, leave our Kashmir. This is go their message. India! Go, go, India! Go, go, India! go India! Go India! Go India! Go India! Go India! Let me also tell you that it is the resolve of the people of Jammu and Kashmir that no matter how the fight is, because they have been fighting for the past 200 years, they will break the chains and shackles of bondage of slavery and occupation. Let me also tell you that the international community is realizing that now India must be held accountable for its crimes against humanity. Let me also tell you that we appeal to the governments in the Western countries, starting with the United Kingdom, who are custodians of human rights all around the world must break their eerie silence on Kashmir because what is happening in Kashmir is the worst human rights crisis in the world today in this century. Let me thank all party parliamentary Kashmir group and all party parliamentary group on 
Pakistan for their solidarity with the Kashmiris. The APPKG has issued a very comprehensive report, and as I said yesterday in the international conference, that this be an evolving living document, that this be transmitted to the United Nations Secretary General, to the High Commissioner for Human Rights, that it be transmitted to 10 Downing Street, to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, to the United Nations Security Council, and I'll appeal to the diaspora community, I'll appeal to the diaspora community, at least that part of the community which is still listening to us, <laughs> that please contact your interlocutors here by telephone, by communications, and by meeting MPs and peers. And here, through this campaign, create a firestorm of protest here against the atrocities which are being committed in the Indian occupied Kashmir. I would also suggest I made this proposal yesterday and it has some resonance, that's why I'm repeating it to you today. To the citizens of the United Kingdom and to the citizens of the world, then let's all start a boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign and movement against India. So that India is held accountable by the citizens of the world for the crimes that it is committing. Endorse, if you endorse this proposal, then applaud. If you endorse this proposal, then applaud. We also request the United Nations Secretary General to appoint a special representative on Kashmir. We also appeal to the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bakale, the former President of Chile to appoint a special rapporteur on Kashmir. Let me also tell you, all of you who are present in many are here from Kashmir. All the two parts of Kashmir, Azad Kashmir and Indian occupied Kashmir. That this struggle, which has not reached its destination yet, this has been going on for 200 years. Let me also tell you, very few people know that in this struggle we have been played alive and therefore we pay tribute to all those martyrs, particularly half a million people who have been killed after 1947. Let me also tell you, very few people are aware of the fact that the people of Indian occupied Kashmir have suffered their own holocausts and pogroms. Let me, I am moving towards the conclusion of my remarks. Let me tell you, can I request silence again, please? Because I am moving to the operative part of my message. Can I request silence once again? Please, and I'll request everybody to listen intently to the remarks which would be made by the Foreign Minister of Pakistan. Please be silent for a while. And thank you so much for cooperating, at least partially. But thank you so much, and I'm saying, what I'm saying is that we, the Kashmiris, are not here to beg for our freedom or liberty or our fundamental rights that we will attain our sins because we are giving sacrifices. We are here to remind you of your obligations because human rights violations or human rights crisis in Kashmir is the responsibility of the entire humanity. It is not just the responsibility of the people of Pakistan or the people of India or the United Nations Security Council. It is your collective responsibility. Let me also give you a message from the people of the Indian occupied Kashmir and Azad Kashmir. We shall not give up. We shall not surrender and we shall not capitulate under any circumstances. <laughs> the 
families are giving blood. And let me tell you that we are grateful to the state of Pakistan, which despite multiple challenges, very serious challenges, has been steadfast in its stance on Kashmir. And therefore, thank you, Pakistan. Now it is also the responsibility of the entire international community to give support to the cause of the Kashmiris. My final word is that there is room for diplomacy. We believe that war does not offer a solution. There can't be any military solution. We, in Azad Kashmir, in the Indian occupied Kashmir, the people of Pakistan, the state of Pakistan, we firmly believe that the issue of Jammu and Kashmir can be resolved only through political and diplomatic means. Only through political and diplomatic means. And we are ready for all processes under the Charter of the United Nations, under the United Nations Security Council, EJS, or any other effort which is made to promote conciliation, mediation, negotiations. With this, I thank you, and once again, thank you London, thank you United Kingdom. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We shall not give up, we shall not surrender. I think this message is very solid and very solemn. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for honoring the British Pakistan and for your presence from Abad Jammu and Kashmir. Now, before I invite our keynote speaker, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, I have a quick word of thanks, as Mr. President mentioned. This exhibition, that's the trail of tears that you witnessed, that has been organized by Raja Najabat Hussain. We are grateful for all his hard work throughout the months. To make this program, as Mr. President mentioned, when we rightly acknowledge um, our brother Imran Hussain, this program has been co-hosted by the World Congress of Overseas Pakistanis, and we are grateful to the chairman, to the members' board of governors, and all those who are present from the World Congress of Overseas Pakistanis to make this program happen. Now, getting into the final moment, listening to the keynote speaker, we have the privilege of having here the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, who is a staunch and vocal supporter to the cause of Kashmir. He is also from my city, so I have covered honors. So while we invite our Foreign Minister, His Excellency Shah Mahmood Qureshi, I'll be requesting you to observe full silence and listen to him intently. Excellencies, distinguished dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum, good evening. We are gathered here today to salute the courage and the resilience of the people of Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. To pay homage to their sacrifices and to join our voice with others to share their grief, to listen to their sorrows. We are privileged to have with us members of the Pakistani Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, representing the spectrum of political opinion in our upper house of parliament. The people of occupied Jammu and Kashmir continue to bear with great fortitude untold adversities unleashed by a ruthless and merciless oppressor. A picture, it is said, is worth a thousand words. To have before you the women's saga of Indian occupation. The abuse it has entailed, the crimes it has committed, the cost it has brought to bear upon a helpless and helpless population. 
Kashmiris of Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir are being brutally and systematically murdered, maimed, and raped for the simple crime of demanding their right of self determination. A right inherent to all mankind as an inalienable and sacrosanct as life itself. A right that has been committed by the international community and by India itself. But India has no intention of honoring its commitments. As the international community stands idly by India's door hall, occupied territories, a heavy and opaque iron curtain. Behind the iron curtain, oppression of every conceivable nature goes unabated, unquestioned, and unaccounted. For the reckoning of the Indian state, every civilian in Indian occupied Kashmir is a terrorist. And the cheapest commodity there is life of the Kashmiri. Brutal crackdowns, curfews, detentions, massacres, target killings, sieges, burn downs, torture, disappearances, rapes, molestation, and fake encounters have not extinguished the flame of freedom, only fueled it further. In three decades of the latest uprising, Conservative estimates put 100,000 martyred, 145,000 arrested, 23,000 women widowed, 11,111 cadre of arrested, 1,8,000 children orphaned. One lakh nine thousand structures, arson, and cutting. I wish to draw your attention towards the unrelenting atrocities, oppression, and torture being faced by the Kashmiri women. Widow is a term unique to the Indian occupied Kashmir context, alluding to nine Kashmiri women. Have disappeared and remain missing, their fates unknown. Sexual humiliation and rape remain a fatal tool at the hands of the population justice. What happened in the villages of Kazan and Moshwara on the cold night of 23rd February 1991 is still alive in the minds and memories of people. In a search for operation, over 100 women were reportedly dishonored. Children too have been victims of unfathomable horrors. An entire generation is growing up, traumatized under the dark shadow of targeted attacks, sexual violence, and forced disappearances. In November 2018, Eva. 20-month-old girl from Sofia in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir was hit by pellets. Tragically, despite undergoing surgery, she might still lose eyesight in her right eye. The Kashmiris are aware that their injuries will not be taken seriously by the international community. The rampant use of pellet guns has destroyed the lives of several other Kashmiris, blinding and mutilating them, taking away their eyesight and livelihood. And who can forget the case of eight year old Aspavano of Katwa, who was abducted, repeatedly gang raped, and ultimately killed. This day of the children is the tip of the iceberg. It is a hard it is hard to imagine the true quantum of prosecution being committed. And yet, justice has been elusive in all these years. And the Indian Army has continued to exercise barbarism under the umbrella of impunity and forging by the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. This draconian war calls for investigation only if allowed. Today, because single conviction 
occupation of land, at least 90,000 have lost their lives, and many more have been injured for demanding the right to self-determination. In 2018, an eight-year-old girl had to pay the price for being a Kashmiri Muslim. A Sifa was kidnapped and gang raped in a temple for eight days. She was later found dead in a dreadful condition. One of the five rapists was a police officer, and another a government official belonging to the extremist army backed by the Indian occupation forces. Instead of condemning the incident, rallies were taken out in support of the rapist, probably an exception in history. Women, especially young girls in Jammu and Kashmir, have always been easy targets. In 2017, at least 200 women were drugged and their braids were chopped by unknown men. Kashmir has always been there for the um, It has been used as a weapon of war, but the women folk of Kashmir, uh, I believe they are the greatest women in the world because uh, uh, they are not just taking care of their homes, uh, but they're going out, they're facing the occupation forces, the body searches every day, the way they go, uh, they take uh, they go rides on the buses, the way they get harassed by the army, the comments, even the way they stare at us, I call that a rape. In 2017, a young boy while going to a funeral was picked up by the Indian occupying forces and tied to the front of a surface jeep. He was driven through 13 villages before he was handed over to a village head in an unconscious condition. This was all done to stop the protesters who planned to protest against the death of eight innocent Kashmiris killed by the Indian occupation forces. Sadly, the official responsible for this savage act was awarded with gallantry award by the Indian forces rather than being questioned for his sadistic act. The other day, around six Kashmiri youth were crushed to death under their army truck just to satisfy the Indian army. Such brutalities are now an everyday routine in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir, unveiling India's disgraceful approach towards the issue. Anyone who dares to raise voice or protest against the cruel actions is dealt with ruthlessness. After the extrajudicial killing of Burunwani, a series of massive protests began and people in large numbers hit the streets. He's like a poor kid for the Kashmiri youth issue. Because this boy is young boy and looked like a hero. He had a lot of dreams and he was a gold medalist and he came from a highly educated background. Uh, but he was humiliated, he was body searched, he was taken to the interrogation centre and uh, he did the same with his younger brother uh, and even his sister there last year. Severe steps were taken by the Indian occupation forces to stop these protests. The results were catastrophic. At least 500 were killed and over 200,000 injured. This is a war on a defenseless nation. Uh, it's a they're using snipers, they're using power shells, they're using pellets, super guns, even phosphorus shells in many instances. The Indian occupation forces excessively use pellet guns against unarmed protesters. Since 2017, at least 8,000 people, including women and children, have been injured. And 273 have been blinded by the use of pellet guns. The issue got international attention and massive campaigns hit the social media supporting the victims, but could not loosen India's stance towards Kashmiris. Black laws that uh, Today, there are thousands of unmarked graves in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Our police say that you have no peace in Kutta, because the only way somebody is rich is for the graphics to be there, and under the circumstances, he was killed. Thousands of families have been forced to flee their homes due to the outrageous policies adopted by the Indian occupation forces. The question is, why does India get away with such massive crimes against the Kashmiris, and when does it all end? Whenever there is an issue raised in Jammu and Kashmir, counter-narratives are 
produced on a massive scale, false impressions are communicated internationally. India does not allow any independent media in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. India uh, is not ready at all uh, to look into this matter seriously. Their intentions have never been right. They have always been a peace process car that used to buy time, photo opportunities, and never been result oriented. To justify their acts, India's favorite scapegoat is Pakistan. India's problem that Pakistan has always been persistent and proactive in raising its voice on all the international forums to stop the bloodshed of the innocent Kashmiris. Pakistan believes the only way to resolve the issue is through the resolutions of the United Nations Security Council. Pakistan has been the strongest advocate for the Kashmiri people. The Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights published a groundbreaking report recognizing the human rights atrocities being committed by India in occupied Kashmir. I encourage the Council to consider establishing a commission of inquiry for more comprehensive
Vanessa, please go ahead. Vanessa, go ahead, sir. Vanessa, please go ahead. Nobody listening, don't go. Vanessa, please go ahead.
امان اللہ خان مقبوضہ جمعہ کشمیر سے بھارتی بربریت کا تاپفن بلکل ایسا ہی ہے جیسے تھا ہٹلر کے ہولو کاس کا تاریخ تاپفن تار تار کر دیا ہے انڈین فوج نے عشمت انسانیت کا پیر ہن امن انسانیت و حفا کی عفت کو اس نے پہنا دیا فسائی سنگینوں سے کفن کارپوریٹ سرمایہ داری اور عالمی ملٹری انڈسٹرل کمپلیکس کا کشمیریوں کے قتل عام پر خاموشی کا جشن یہ جشن بے حسی ہے عالمی سرمایہ و میڈیا کا جنگی فن دس لاکھ بھارتی افواج قابض ہیں جمعوں کشمیر پہ برائے جنگی جرائم و جشن مجھے خلچہ ہے کہیں بن نہ جائے ہیروشیما او ناگسا کی کہیں جنوبی ایشیا کا دھن پاکستان و جمعوں کشمیر کبھی بھی سودا نہ کریں گے حریت و ازادی پہ چاہے بھارت کرے لاکھوں جتن بھارتی ظلم کے جنگی دیبتا جنگی دیبتا کو ہر صورت کرنا ہے دفن